So I'm going to talk about the advanced questions on permutation combination. Now in the previous first, in the first session, uh, what you mostly learned was filling space methods. Uh, you learned about the different kind of uh, um, um, double counting, the kind of mistakes that you make uh, by doing double counting. Okay. In this sec session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, on questions, basically where a lot of cases are involved. Okay, uh, a lot of people falter in permutation combination questions when they need to uh, figure out what are the different cases that are possible, along with the challenge of uh, figuring out uh, whether need, they need to apply permutation or combination. Okay, so it's going to be a mix of both. Now, in the first session, uh, we learned about the filling space method. Now, uh, and we did not emphasize a lot on the formulas. And, and I totally agree with the fact that if there's a way to avoid such formulas, then that's better, okay? But uh, I still believe that there are certain questions where uh, you can, uh, which are like say direct application of the formula. Uh, Piyush did touch on this a little bit in the uh, at the end of the session, the first session, when you talked about uh, NCR and NPR. I just want to reaffirm the same fact that uh, at the high level, you should at least know the formula of permutation and combination. So I've, I've bought this on my screen. Uh, so the formula for NPR permutation is n factorial by n minus r, n minus r factorial. If you don't know this, please make a note of it. Uh, if you'll notice that in combination formula, uh, the only difference between permutation and combination, if you notice, is this r factorial here, if you notice. That's the only difference. Now, we are dividing this by r factorial in case of combination uh, because we are trying to uh, remove all the cases of arrangement. And this was something which was discussed at a high level in the uh, previous session. But long story short, I would say keep this formula handy. Uh, there will be certain questions which would directly uh, ask you to uh, apply these formulas. Like for example, let's say if you are told that, hey, I need to select say two people out of five. Okay. Uh, now in this case, obviously we can use the filling space method to solve the question, but here's a direct application of combination formula. Like I've been asked to select, I've been asked to select two out of five. So if that is the case, I know I need to do 5c2 so i can directly apply this formula and get my answer that's the idea here so wherever we see direct application we'll go for it there's one more formula uh, and uh, that's a very high level formula uh, i'm not going to uh, into complicated formulas this is the formula of probability that we are going to use and this is the only formula that we are going to use for probability uh, which is the number of favorable cases by total number of cases okay now, if uh, if there's any more of you who's confused, what do I mean by favorable cases? Or what do I mean by total number of cases? Uh, let me just give you a very simple example here, just here so that when you move forward, uh, you understand uh, what the meaning of these two. And I'm just taking a simple example, okay? Uh, let's say um, if I give you a set of five numbers, say one, two, three, four, five, okay? And uh, let's say if I ask you, hey, tell me, what is the uh, i'm selecting one number from this set okay just one number uh what is the probability of that number being a prime number okay if i ask you something like that what would be your answer what would you say what are your favorable cases let's talk about that i'm looking for i'm picking a number and i want to figure out what is the probability that the number is a prime number so what would be my favorable cases can anyone tell me What are my favorable cases? I'm looking for a prime number. Uh, yes, Pankaj, you're correct. Uh, uh, Shivani, you're also correct. There will be only three favorable cases, right? So the prime numbers are two, three, and five. So in this case, again, it's a very simple example, I know. But the point is that favorable cases would be two, three, five. So you'd say three. Total number of cases are all that is available to us. Now, in this case, I have all the five numbers available to us when I'm uh, when I'm picking a simple number, single number. So I would say the probability is three by five. So that's the idea about uh, favorable cases and total number of cases that you just need to keep in mind uh, at this point of time. Uh, wherever there's any advanced application required, I'll discuss it, don't worry. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, the, the process is going to remain uh, simple you have learned the basics. I want you to teach you the app, advanced application of those kind of questions. So I'll be simply uh, 
giving you a question okay whatever you have learned in the previous session or those who are attending the first time or whatever is your knowledge about permutation combination try to apply it in the questions that i'm going to give okay the first four questions are solely based on advanced permutation combination questions and they are based on uh, questions that like related to numbers word uh, related to letters those kind of questions the, so i'll be giving you a question i'll give you about two two and a half minutes to solve the question okay and uh, once you are done solving it, I'll show the poll and I'll discuss uh, what is the best way to solve that question and if, if there are any pitfalls, how you can avoid them. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, if this is perfectly clear, kindly mark case so that I can show you the first question. Please mark yes if this is perfectly clear. Okay. So here's the first question, guys. Um, I can see all of you understood. This is the first question. I'm giving you two and a half minutes to solve, uh, solve the question. And once you're done with it, we'll discuss it. All the best. And I'm going to bring up the poll just one sec. The poll is live. I would request all of you to answer, give, uh, put your answers in the poll and not in the chat box, okay? For those of you are joining now, I have shared a question. I would want you to try it out. Okay, guys, you have about 30 seconds more. It's a pretty interesting question, may seem difficult. Okay, another 10 seconds. 
Uh, I would encourage all of you to participate, uh, even if you think uh, you're not sure what the answer is. As I keep on telling everybody in GMAT, you'll have to mark the answer. So get into the habit of that. Okay, I am going to end the poll. So if there's anyone else who would want to put in the response, please do so. Great. And have a very interesting result. Um, about 37% of you think that the answer should be B, okay, which is good. Uh, I'm not saying that's correct, but that's the majority. Uh, 29% of you are thinking the answer should be E. 16% uh, that's the third highest is 231 and about 88% think there's a split between A and C. So it's all over the place as you can see. Okay, now before moving on to the discussion, tell me uh, how was the question? Did you find it difficult? Did you find it easy, lengthy? What went through your mind when you were doing this? And uh, you can just talk at a high level about your approach also. That's not a problem. Obviously, I'm going to discuss it, but uh, I would want to know your opinion. Anyone? What do you think of this question? Was it difficult? Okay, Harshit is saying it's logical. Yes, it, almost all question is logical. Nikita, difficult. Okay, tough, quite confusing. Hmm, okay. Depends if my answer is correct. Okay. Uh, so you can tell me, Dhruv, what was your answer? Panka says it's difficult. Amit is saying tricky. Okay. So see, uh, questions like these, uh, they were saying lengthy. Okay. I will, I will show you that this question, if you understand it correctly. So the understanding part might take some time, maybe a minute, maybe. But once you understand the question, this question can be solved in at the max 30 to 45 seconds. So I would say this question can definitely be solved in two minutes. And let me uh, uh, talk how. Okay. Now, questions like these, where the, where the main problem is that uh, they give you such complicated uh, powers, right? 10 to the power 21. And you may think, hey, what do I do with this 10 to the power 21? This looks difficult. It's, it's a big, huge number. Now, let me ask you a single question. The first, first question, uh, how many digits are there in 10 to the power 21? That's my first question. So when I read this, that is the first thing that I should think about. Okay, how many uh, digits are there in 10 to the power 21? Number of digits. Can anyone tell me how many digits are there in 10 to the power 21? Okay, Pankaj says 23. What about the others? 22, 22. Uh, Exactly. So there's a single digit, which is one, and there are 21 zeros. Please understand this. Those who are saying 23, uh, you are incorrect. Please keep in mind, Shivani 21 is a trap. That is why it was de deliberately given. 21 is incorrect. There are 21 zeros. This is how you need to understand. You might face these kind of problems. That's why I deliberately gave you. The reason, the, when you're solving such questions, then you have a big number. You're not sure how many digits would be there. Always try and think by taking small numbers. So what I would have done is I would have thought about 10 to the power one. I would have thought about 10 to the power two. I would have thought about 10 to the power three, sorry, 10 to the power three. And I would have ever looked at this and thought, okay, how many digits do I have? When the power is one, I have two digits here. When the power is two, I have three digits. When the power is basically uh, three, I have four digits. So basically 10 to the power 21 is basically a 22 digit number. Okay, that's the first inference I would make. Okay, now how many integers exist between one and 10 to the power 21? So I'm talking about between, I'm not including any of them. So when I'm talking about between, what kind of digit are we trying to look at? Should we take a 22 digit number into consideration or should we just take a, uh, from a single digit to a 21 digit? What do you think should we do? Is the question clear? Uh, so there are 22 digits, 10 to the power 21, two digits. I'm looking in between, okay? So I look at a single digit number, I look at a two digit number, I look at a three digit number, I look at a four digit number, till what point? Should I look at 22 digit numbers or should I end at uh, 21 digit? 
single digit to 21 digit. Very good. Yeah, Shashank, that's absolutely correct. We need to exclude the first and the last. The last is a 22 digit number. We are going just one below. So single to 21 digit. That's absolutely good, guys. Very good. Okay. So this is very, uh, it's clear to us. And so the first stage is clear. We are perfectly, uh, and we perfectly understand that it could be a single digit, a two digit, a three digit, a four digit, and so on and so forth, till a 21 digit number. Again, I'm not going to draw all this, but the idea is a 21 digit number. That's good. Okay. So first thing done. It might take us 30 to 45 seconds to think this. Let's think in this way. Okay. Let's come to the second part where most of you fell for the trap. Okay. Where the sum of digit is exactly two. Now, if the sum of digit is exactly two, in how many ways can I get the sum of digit as two? As two? Can anyone tell me in how many ways can I get the sum of digit as two? There are a lot of digits in a number. Let's say, for example, how do I add up all the numbers and get two? Anyone? Tariq, uh, that's good. One and one, that's good. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, no, I'm not asking about all the cases, Dhruv. You're right. One, one, uh, two ways, Arun, that you're correct. One way is that you there's a single digit only, like numbers like these. Say, for example, uh, just just the number two or basically two, zero, right? Things like this, where, there's, where, a, where a single digit in the whole number is exactly two and the rest are zero. I'm okay with it. Okay. The other possibility is I have numbers in which I have two single digits, two, two, one like this. Okay. One, one or I have one, one, and the remaining numbers are zero. Is this part clear or not? Because this is crucial to solving the question. If you missed this, then you will end up making a mistake in the question. So tell me if this part is clear or not. In the really absolutely correct, two ones and one, two. This is a very important inference that you need to make to solve the question. Those of you who just took a single case ended up marking the answer as B, which was a trap about, I think, uh, 37% of you marked the answer as 21 and you made uh, most of you made this this mistake only you thought of only one case that was a trap that is set for you now once you understand this that okay Vardhan you're saying please explain again can you tell me what is the doubt did you understand so the question says sum of digits is exactly two so basically what you need to do is let's say for you have a number a b c d let's just check hypothetically I need to add this up and get the sum of digit as two. How can I get that? One way is that one of the digit is two and the remaining are zero. That's one way. The other way is to have one plus one and the remaining as zero. Now it could be a two digit number. It could be a four digit number, whatever be the case. But these, when I'm adding the, adding the digits, the sum should add up to two. And the only way is that if one of the number turns up to be two, then remaining zero. The other case is when two numbers are one each and the remaining are zero. I hope this is clear now. Okay. Yes, uh, Dhruv, if you miss this, you will uh, end up marking either B or maybe A. That That's a possibility. Okay. Now, since this is clear, let's move on to the main part. Okay. Where we do the actual calculation. And there are a number of ways to do it. I'm just going to show you one of them. Okay. Uh, two of them. But I'll start off with the one which in the exam, if I don't know anything, if I have no clue, how should I go about doing it? So what I'm going to do is in the exam, if I had to solve this question, I would have divided that into two different cases. I would have said, okay, one case is possible when one of the digit is two and the remaining are zero. Okay, that's one possibility. The other case is that I have one one and the others are zero. So let me write down these two cases. Case number one. Now you'll notice a pattern here. See, if I have a single digit number, the only number that is possible is two, right? In this case, I'll get the sum of digit as exactly two. Okay. If I have a two digit number, the first place has to be filled with two. There's no other possibility. I cannot place it a zero here. The first place has to be two and the remaining part has to be a zero. So the only number possible is two zero. When I have a three digit number, again, notice I have to place the two here and the remaining two have to be zero. There's no other option. So I'll again get one case here. If I have a four digit number again or two, again, I, I should not do this. I'm just trying to show you the pattern basically. Ideally, by now I should have understood or I should have inferred that if I have a two and the remaining are zeros, uh, whatever number, whatever digit I take, single digit, two digit, three digit, four digit, there's only one possibility. Just one possibility. So how many numbers can I form? If I know that I can go up till 21 digits, 
right? And for each digit, for each digit, I'm just getting one case. So one case, one case, one case, one case, till the 21st digit that I have here, this will also be one case. So if I add this up, how many cases will I get? Pankaj, zero two is a single digit number. I, and I have placed two in the units. If you notice, this is my first case. The first case has two in the units digit. I hope this is clear. Okay, 21 cases. Absolutely good, everyone. So there will be 21 cases. So see, how, first part done, 21 cases. How much time did it take? The moment I saw the pattern, the moment I can infer the starting place has to be two and the remaining zeros, I can easily come up to 21 cases. Okay, let's come to the next one. Now, the moment I've done this, this gives me one more clarity. Uh, when I'm coming to this part, I know when I'm thinking of, now I have to have two ones. I have to have two ones to get the sum of digit two. So I cannot start with a single digit number. I have to start with a two digit number. Okay, so in this case, I'll have only 20 cases. Please keep this in mind, guys. Don't make this mistake. I'm not starting with a single digit number. So I'll have only 20 cases, unlike 21. Now, one case could be one one. Now, the clarity that I get from this is that the first place is always fixed. The first place for whatever digit number that I take will always have one in the starting place. There's no other option. So whatever I need to play with, I have to play with the ones and the zeros. Okay, now think about it. The remaining two places for a three digit number is one zero. These two, uh, there are two possibilities, zero one that I can place here, right? Either it could be one zero or it could be zero one. So I can fill this in two ways. I hope this is clear. Now in these two, three places for a four digit number, I have these options with me, one, zero, zero. I'll get numbers like this. Just one example I'm showing you. In this case, the sum of digit is two, right? Now I have to fill this. Now this is a question which I want to ask you and you need to tell me. If I have these three digits and I need to fill this in, in these three spaces, since you have attended the first session, in how many ways can I do that? Three places and I have one, zero, zero. In how many ways can I do that? Anyone? I have three spaces and I have one zero zero which I need to fill in. In how many ways can I do it? Uh, and the issue fell for the trap. There are two zeros. There are two zeros. So you have to do, Sail, you are correct. Three factorial by two factorial. Very good. That's good, three factorial by two factorial. So that would be, this would be there are three places. So I would say three times two times one, which is three factorial. And there are two zeros. So I need to divide by two factorial. This is something which you did in the first session in the, in the questions which are related to letters. So this can be done in three ways. So now can you see the pattern? This was done in one ways. This was done in two ways. This was done in three ways. If you want, you can try one more. If you want to, that's totally okay. I can one, zero, zero, zero. Now I have four spaces. I need to fill it with one and three zeros. This, I can do it in four factorial by three factorial, which is four ways. So notice I'm getting a pattern here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It will go on till 20 cases. So it will be like this. One plus two plus three plus four till 20. And if I add this up, I'll get 20 times 21 by two, which is equal to two one zero so you have 210 cases here you have 21 cases here so the answer in this case would be 231 now if you have any doubts please ask there's another way to, a faster way to do it but i'm just saying in the exam if in a scenario where a, there will be certain questions where you might not have solved before which you might not have solved before in such scenarios you have to obviously first of all figure out the two things that we did how we can get the sum of digits as two and what does 10 to the power 21 actually stand how many digits are there after that you'll have to do certain inferences like these, the way I did it in the first case, there are 21 cases. And the second one, you'll have to look for a pattern like this, from where you understand that you're getting a sum of natural numbers like one, two, three, four, till 20. Uh, Shivani, uh, the formula for sum of, uh, sum of natural numbers, one plus two plus three till n, is n times n into n plus one by two. That's the formula, okay?
okay uh, shashank what is the uh, 210 okay uh, we can apply yes this is see this is, as i told you this is an advanced session the most of the questions here are difficult they are going to be seven level question okay so can you please repeat okay i can see um, shashank what exactly do you not understand you need to tell me because if i repeat the whole thing it will take a lot of time so if there's any specific case that you did not understand please ask i'll be more than happy to explain uh shivani devnita i hope this is clear why we, why are we dividing it by two okay tarik it's clear okay now there's one more way to do it guys uh, i just want to talk about it very quickly uh, uh let me go to the next slide so if this is clear let me talk about the next method that you could have used now see uh understand this that when you're making a number with two Okay, let's go back to the last, this slide. Notice that you're basically using twos and zeros, nothing else, right? And the same goes for this also. Notice when you're making uh, numbers with one and zero, you're using two ones and the remaining are zeros. Okay, how many zeros that you required? In this case, you required one, in this case, required two. Now, what you could have done is, you could have thought in this way. Okay, I am looking for a 21 digit, uh, the maximum that I'm looking for is a 21 digit number. Okay, I'm, again, I did not draw all 21, but the idea is that I'm looking for a 21. That's the maximum that I'm looking for. Okay, if let's talk about a case where a single digit is two and the remaining are zeros. Okay, all, all the remaining are zeros. There are 20 zeros basically. Now, if I ask you a question, hey, you have a single two and 20 zeros, and I want you to place them in this 21 spaces, and there are no restrictions. Okay, zero can come in ahead, zero. Zero can be in front, zero can be in back. Everything is possible, open game. What will be your answer? Zero to Pankaj, zero two is a, zero two means simply two, okay? And two comes after one. So two is actually between one and 10 to the power 21 Pankaj. I hope this is clear. Why are we fixing two? Because we are asked that the sum of digit is exactly two. Anyone can can anyone answer my question? Pankaj says 21 factorial. You're making a mistake. It's not 21 factorial. Arun says 21 C1. Okay, good. 21 factorial by 20 factorial. That's absolutely good, guys. This is good. That's absolutely good. So here also there are 21 spaces, 21 digits, right? So you'd say 21 factorial. But as I told you, there are 20 zeros. So you divide by 20 factorial. And notice this is nothing but 21. Can anyone tell me what did I do here? Obviously I'm going to explain, but did you understand what I'm trying to do here? Why was I okay placing the zeros in front? I did not have a problem. And I got the same answer, notice. I got the same answer, 21. Can anyone take a shot at what I did here? Why was I okay placing the zeros in the beginning? Pankaj says we remove the duplicacy. Yeah, we are removing the duplicates, but why are still we okay with placing zero in the starting? Two is also included. See guys, uh, let me explain. The reason I did this is because see, uh, I'm looking for all kind of digit of numbers, okay? It could be a single digit, two digit, three digit, four digit, right? Now, think out this way. If I place zeros in the starting, all the 20 zeros in the starting, and place two at the end, okay? What What is the value of this number? Can anyone tell me what is the value of this number? It's two only, right? It's two only. So even if I place all the zeros in the starting, I'm getting my two, okay? If I place one, one, two here and the last zero here, I'm getting a 20 because the zeros in the starting don't add any value. So basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm getting all my cases here, single digit, two digit, three digit, four digit, all cases are being covered here in one single uh, go. I don't have to do it again and again. If zeros on this starting, I don't have a problem. Whatever is there after the zero would be my number. And here I'm considering all the cases, single digit, two digit, three digit, four digit. And the same thing can be done for this case also. Notice I have two ones and 19 zeros here. I can do the same thing. I can say, hey, there are 21 places. Okay. I need to fill this 21 spaces with these 21 numbers. 
Okay, how do I do that? There are 21 places, 21 numbers. So I'll write it as 21 factorial, but these two ones are repeating itself. So I'll divide it by two factorial and there are 19 zeros which are repeating itself. So I'll divide by 19 factorial and notice if I simplify it, I'll get my answer as 2110. And I can add this up to get 231. Again, this is slightly difficult, slightly more conceptual. Uh, so I do not expect that you will be able to think of this or not or all of you will be able to think of this in one go. But this is a very quick way to find out all the cases, especially a lot of zeros are involved. You can just place them in the starting and get the answer. But keep in mind, it's not necessary that you have to learn this method. I'm just showing you an alternate way of doing it. What I what what I really want to put across here is two uh, two things. The learning that you need to keep in mind, guys, is that uh, to solve such questions, you should be able to understand the first thing. The first thing is very critical. You need to figure out how to get the sum of digits at two. I deliberately gave the option as B twenty one, and most of you fell for it because you are not considering all cases. In difficult questions, the key to get the question correct is to have all the cases in place. And after that, you just place them logically. It might take you some time initially, obviously, because these are difficult, but there is always a pattern which will help you get the answer. Okay, so uh, make sure that you spend time before jumping into solving the question, making spaces in figuring out how many cases do I need to consider, okay? Okay, I've spent enough time on this question. So let's move on to the next one uh, where you again need to think of cases. Okay, so give your best shot in this question. And I'll bring up the poll in a minute. Okay, guys, another 30 seconds. By the way, I'm glad that you're doing good in this question. Uh, there's a significant improvement in the accuracy of this question. Significant improvement. So uh, I'll just give you another 30 seconds as I told you and then I'll discuss the questions. If there's anyone else who would want to mark the answer, I've already given you a hint, you need to make cases. So you should be able to do it.
another 10 seconds. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. So about 60% of you think that the answer is C, which is good if I remember correctly, the answer is C. Uh, but uh, a lot of you mark the answer as E, 21%. Again, there was a small trap which was set both in D and E. Thankfully, a lot of people did not choose D, which is good. Uh, and um, so once again, let's talk about the difficulty level of this question. How did you find this question? Uh, I'm sure you must have found this easier than the first one, right? After doing the first one, this was easy. Was this? Did you find this easy? Okay, Karishma, Shivani, they are saying that's easy. Okay, Amit says tricky. It's slightly tricky. There's just one thing, one. Uh, case that you need to consider properly if you are able to do that the question is a piece of cake believe me okay okay let me very quickly jump into this and discuss it okay so the simple the question is very simple i have been given the word freezing and i need to use the letters of these words to create four letter words okay now normally uh the questions like these are pretty easy okay if i had a word instead of freezing uh with one less E, it would have been a piece of cake, right? Nothing, I, I don't need to do anything. Just count the number of uh, dig, uh, alphabets that you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, seven, P, four, to get your answer. Or you can use the filling space method to say, hey, the first place can be filled in this way, second place can be filled in this way, third place can be filled in this way, right? But the problem comes is when you have some letters which are repeating itself, okay? Now, in this case, uh, you cannot simply just say, hey, I have the word freezing. It's an eight letter word. OK, so well, and I need a four letter word. So let me place it like this eight into seven into six into five. Can anyone tell me what is wrong with this? Uh, why, why am I saying you cannot do this when there's repetition? What's happening here? What's the problem with this? What's the issue with this uh, 8765? There are two E's, so you uh, so the arrangement of these two E's, uh, you, don't, you don't need to do the arrangement of those two E's, right? When you write 8765, you're, you're assuming that whatever alphabets that you're choosing, okay, whatever four alphabets that you're choosing, they can arrange themselves in any way that is possible. But however, let's say if you choose F, R, E, E, okay, these four letters, while arranging them, if you place say, an R here, F here, E here, E here, you cannot do another arrangement here. Both these E's are E's. You, if you swap them also, nothing changes, right? So if when you see the trigger here when solving these kind of questions is that if you see a repetition, the best way is to pause and divide the cases. OK, don't go about just jumping directly and writing it like this because you don't know what four letters are you choosing. Say, for example, if you choose F, R, Z, N. This is a hypothetical example. Here, there's no problem. When you're placing them here, you can place F, R, Z in any way that you want to arrange them in whatever way that you want to arrange. But with F, R, E, E, where you have two E's, there are certain limitations. Okay. So when you're solving a question like this, what I prefer is, and I'm just telling you a general way that you should follow, which will uh, definitely help you solve such questions. Divide them into cases. Okay. What do I mean by cases? Take a case where you say, hey, let me just figure out how many four letter words can I form when there is just a single E, I don't have to worry about E. Let's just think when I have just these alphabets, just these seven alphabets. Okay, if I have these and I need to place them in this uh, four places, in how many ways can I do it? Okay, and obviously there are seven letters, so you can say seven times six times five times Four. Anyone has any a doubt here? Please ask. If you have any doubt, this is the time to ask. Or is this clear? Uh, 
no understand pankaj this is a this is a thing that you need to keep in mind i'm clearly stating using the letters of the word freezing so i'm just using these letters okay if i want repetition to be allowed or if i want a a, a, a alphabet to be used more than once i would have specified that that i want other alphabets to be used more than once okay i hope that clear answers your query pankaj so this is what we need to do we just need to count each one of them uh, exactly once if there's any doubt uh, now is the time to ask okay uh, ashwarya has an interesting question why can't we use 8c4 to first select the letters um, tell me you, when i'm selecting 8c4 how, how will you identify the four that you're choosing has both e's or not or has all four unique alphabets is there a way to figure that out please let me know if you can we can figure that out we cannot figure that out right 8c4 doesn't tell me which four alphabets that i'm taking it's quite possible that you choose fre as i told you it's quite possible okay any doubts here guys please ask one sec any if you have any doubts please ask yes that's absolutely correct we take two cases when you're saying we take two cases you're absolutely correct as well that we need to take two cases this is case one when all of them are unique okay case two is when you say hey i'm trying to find form letters in fact now i realize that you all made a mistake most of you made a mistake in this case that if i if you multiply this you already have 840 so the answer cannot be 840 okay you missed a case let me talk about that case which you missed the case that you missed is there could be a possibility when you are using two e's at any place uh, let me not place it so i want to form a word I, I want to form words which has two e's both the e's and any of the remaining letters okay if you have any doubts at this point also please uh, let me know before i move ahead so this is the case these are all letters these are all words which are unique all of them are occurring exactly once without any uh, repetition the other possibility is when i'm forming four letter words is when both the e's are present okay i'll have two e's in my four letter word and i'll have two unique unique alphabets out of these six and how do i solve that i solve it in this way i'll say okay first of all to form the four digit numbers i have two two words with me two uh, two alphabets with me i need two more so let me select those two first okay i can select two letters from this in 62 ways okay now i have four letters with me the two that i've chosen from here and two e's from here okay can anyone tell me in how many ways can i arrange it uh, yeah, hey Arun, that's absolutely correct. You answered it correctly. That's good. Anyone else? Can anyone tell me in how many ways can I arrange it? Let me just. Your answer is correct, Arun. So I've selected two letters from F, R, Z, I, N, G. I have two E's. So I have two letters from there, unique, and two E's that are there. I have four alphabets with me. I need to arrange them. In how many ways can I do that? absolutely correct that's absolutely good four factorial because i have four alphabets and these two are repeating itself so four factorial by two factorial okay 62 is 6 into 5 by 2 this is 24 by 2 so if you have any doubts uh, now is the time to ask you can ask me any question that you want any at all if there's any doubt at all Anyone, any questions? Is this clear how you need to solve such questions? What you basically need to do is, first of all, figure out cases. Can you please fill the two, fill the, can you please fill the slots for case two? Okay, what do you mean by slots? Can you explain? Hey, Sail, uh, that is what I'm trying to make you understand. 8 factorial. Tell me what does 8 factorial give me? What if we do 8 factorial? What is 8 factorial? Uh, first of all, tell me that. What is the meaning of 8 factorial? Uh, Vardhan, the duration of this webinar would be about 2 hours, 1 and a half to 2 hours. Okay, I'll show you one slot, uh, one way of filling it, Tariq. What you can do is say these are the four slots. Okay. 
uh, one way of filling it would be two E's and say I'm selecting FNR. So that's one way of arranging it. That's that's the idea that I'm trying to tell you. Or are you asking me to actually fill it? If you're asking me actually to fill it, this is the way you fill it in the filling space method. You fill it in this way, just one sec, let me rub this. You would say the first place can be filled in four ways, three ways, two ways, one ways, which would give you 24. But since there are two E's, I need to divide it by two. If anyone has any questions, please ask. Yes, Arun, you're absolutely correct. Arrangement of eight letters is eight factorial. I'm not doing eight factorial here. That's why eight factorial by two factorial does not make sense. Sahil, again, eight, seven, six, five. That's what I'm trying to make you understand. Let me take a new slide first. Just one sec. Please understand this, guys, that when I say, uh, let's say, let's take a word like this. I, I know it doesn't make any sense, but let's, let's take something like this, okay? You have eight unique letters, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you want to form four letter words, there is no issue at all. You can place eight here, seven here, six here, five here, and get your answer, okay? Now, the moment I have an alphabet which is repeating, and you need to understand the meaning of eight, seven, six, five, that's very important, okay? Uh, and let me make you understand, uh, Sahil, so that uh, this gets perfectly clear. A possibility is, one of the possibilities, Sahil, is that you're doing this eight, uh, sorry, not take the number. One possibility is you take R, F, R, Z, and say N. That's one of the cases. Now, what you're doing is the moment you do this and divide by two factorial, you are doing it for this particular case also. All the arrangement that is possible, this can be arranged in 24, uh, four factorial ways, right? When you're dividing it by two, you're creating a problem for yourself because this should not get divided by two. When should it get divided by two? It should get divided by two in only and only those cases where you have, say, two E's present in it. Are you getting my point? Now, when you say eight, seven, six, five, you have no control over the digits that you are choosing. Harshit, everyone, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the trap in these questions. Everyone does this uh, uh, eight, seven, six, five, or seven, six, five, four. Please understand, you don't know what you are choosing. You don't know when you say eight, seven, six, five, which letters are you exactly choosing? When they are, when all the letters are unique, you don't have a problem, okay? But when the letters are uh, repeat, uh, when there's a repetition in in the word, then when choose when you're choosing numbers, they when you're choosing this, there will be cases when you're choosing this. Oh, I hope this part is clear. Eight, seven, six, five cover all these cases both cases. This should be perfectly clear, guys, because this is the basic. If you make a mistake in this, you'll always falter in seven level questions. This is the most important thing that you need to keep in mind. Both are present. But when you're dividing it by two factorial, you need to divide it only for these cases, not for these cases. But when you're doing a blanket division of two factorial, you're doing both of them. And that's wrong. I hope this is now clear. And just because, and so uh, first of all, let me put a yes and no poll first because I've been speaking for a long time. Is this part clear or not? Because if this is not clear, then uh, the discussion would be futile. Let me know if this part is perfectly clear or not. Why dividing the whole thing by two factorial is incorrect. I need to do two factorial. I'm not denying it. All I'm saying is that you need to do it for only some specific cases, okay? And not for all of them. But when you do eight, seven, six, five by two factorial, you're doing it for all of them. Okay. So I hope this part is clear. If there are any doubts, please feel free to ask any questions at all. Shivani, I have to check the answer. Let's do it uh, here very quickly once. One sec, let me just do it here once again, very quickly. So if I have F, R, E, Z, I, N, G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letter words, and I need to frame four, four letter words, I would do seven P four, or you can do seven, six, five, four, whatever you are interested in. Okay, uh, seven, I'm selecting four. Uh, so this would give me seven, six, five, four. Okay, this would be how much? 
this would be 840, right? Uh, correct me guys if I'm wrong. And when you have two E's, okay? And you have the remaining letters with you, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And I have to select two, so I'll do 62, which is six into five by two, which is 15, okay? And the arrangement would take four factorial by two factorial, which we already did, which gives you 12. Okay, I think there's a mistake in the answer option, guys. Uh, this would be 180. There's some mistake in the answer option. So basically you have this, uh, so one zero, oh, so that's there, that's fine. So it would be 1020. Any other doubts, anyone please ask. Any questions at all? If you have any doubts, please ask guys. So the crux, the takeaway which you want to write, which I would want you to write down is that please, uh, whenever you have a reputation, divide them into two parts, okay? One case should be pure play unique cases, okay? Uh, no, uh, where reputation is not present, all letters are unique. Find that case and fi complete that. Second case would be where you already fix that, hey, I want to take both the E's or whatever reputation that is there, okay? Take that and then solve the question. Okay, if you don't segregate it, if you do blanket divisions, you'll always get the wrong answer. Uh, Nikita, you're absolutely correct. If you're just arranging, so Nikita is asking, if you just arrange freezing the whole thing, then will the answer be eight factorial by two factorial? Then yes, the answer would be eight factorial by two factorial because you're taking everything. When you're taking everything, understand why are we doing it? Because now we know double E is present in all cases. It's present everywhere. That is why we can do it by two factorial. Yes, Jitin, case one will also cover cases where E is not present. Everything will get covered. Actually, obviously there are cases where uh, there could be three E's, uh, there could be more than one DP, there are possible, but I, I've given you the framework, okay? This is the framework. And whenever you're solving it, you need to draw, do it in this way. So if there are three E's, then you need to make more cases. One case would be where there are three E's present. One case would be where there are two E's present, okay? You have to divide it in that way. Okay, where did I do 15 times 12 Y guy? Oh, oh, this one. Guys, uh, I explained it here. Let me go to the previous slide. I did this, right? I did this. 6 E2 is 6 times 5 times 2. I'm writing it directly. If you want me to write it, the whole formula, you can do that also. It's basically 6 factorial by 4 factorial times 2 factorial. And then here you have 24 uh, by 2, which is 12. So this is what I did. And this value is 15. So I hope this clears everything. You guys, you have a lot of questions. I think if this is uh, at a high level clear, then I would like to move on to the next question because we have a lot of questions. Okay, uh, let me bring up a yes and no poll. If you're if you're kind of okay with this at a high level, I would say let's go to the next one. Let's target that. I hope this is perfectly clear. Uh, if not perfectly, at least 80 to 90 percent. But the but keep this in mind. Uh, again, I'm saying watch the video again. I would say okay, these are difficult questions. If you haven't done permutation combination before, you would randomly write eight factorial, two factor. I get these questions. I'm telling you. I get these kind of questions. So if you are still confused, hey, why am I doing, why is 6C215? Then I would say go to the basics of uh, permutation combination once and watch the recording once more if you have to. You'll be able to understand these. Okay, so now let's go to this question. This is again, uh, this is based on an official question. Okay, uh, so we'll give you a best shot in this one. And a really interesting one. And again, if you have any questions related to the previous one, feel free to uh, write to us. We'll, we'll, more, we'll be more than happy to answer that, okay? We'll be more than happy to help you out. So here's the uh, new question. I am bringing up the poll. And uh, you have two and a half minutes to solve this.
Okay, another 30 seconds, guys. Okay, the accuracy was good 30 seconds before, but now it has taken a hit, surprisingly. Okay, another 10 seconds and then I'll end the poll. So if there's anyone else who would want to mark the answer, please do so. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. Okay, I have an interesting result here. Uh, about 31% of you think the answer should be B. 43 of you, 43% uh, is saying that the answer should be C. And 25% uh, 1296. Now, uh, th why did I give you this question? Um, the reason behind giving this question is because guys, in DMAT, you will come across various scenarios where uh, where you'll be given a definition of certain things. Uh, I don't know how many of you know what a palindrome is, but they will in GMAT give you situations like this. They'll tell you what a definition, they'll give you a definition, they'll talk about what it means, and they'll ask you to solve the question then and there. Okay, and it's not only uh, really, uh, pertaining to permutation combination only. You might face this scenario in uh, any other topic. In fact, I've seen uh, such type of scenarios in divisibility and remainder also, where they give you a completely new scenario. You have to understand it and then solve it then and there. Okay, but let's talk about uh, let's talk about the uh, how do you find this question? Let's talk about that. You do find it difficult. You find it easy. Uh, there's a scope of improving the language of the question. I would say a palindrome is a word. Um, okay. Mm, I think I should have added again. I don't think it would be really necessary, but I think I should have added uh, if that would have helped that any alphabet can be repeated more than once. Hey, then that's totally okay if you're not able to solve them. The idea is to help you understand how to solve it, okay? Uh, okay, Rahul says, definitely not easy. Yes, it's slightly tricky, I would say, Rahul. Slightly tricky. Uh, but once I explain it to you, I hope uh, it should be clear, definitely. Uh, but uh, was this clear, guys? Let me know, because I'm just asking for the sake of improvement uh, of the question. Was this clear after reading it that the alphabets could be used more than once, or was this part not clear? Any alphabet can be used more than once. After that, after reading the definition of uh, palindrome, was this clear or you felt, hey, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, let's talk about, yes, that's my question. Um, okay, I thought, okay. So guys, I'll give you a minute more, okay, uh, for this. Uh, I'll give you a minute more um, if, if you want, if you want to, Try just one more. So the answer won't change much. There's just one one small change that you have to make. Okay. Uh, if you want to give a shot, you can give it a shot. So the the alphabets can be used more than once. Okay. Now let's talk about how you solve these questions. Um, was this part clear, uh, guys? That if say if I have a three-letter word, then whatever I'm putting here, I need to put the same thing here. And if I have a four-letter word, whatever I'm putting here, I need to put the same thing here. Whatever I'm putting here, I need to put the same thing here. Okay, let's take another case just to uh, visually understand this. And this is what I usually do, try and understand it visually. Whatever I select here, I need to put the same thing here. Whatever I select here, I need to put the same thing here. And this middle guy, uh, middle, middle, uh, middle letter is free. It can be anything. So in case of an odd uh, letter word, the middle portion is free to be whatever it wants to but whatever is to the left has to be exactly same to whatever is to the right after the middle. And in case of even uh, even uh, letter words, they are exactly mirror uh, mirror image of each other. Was this part perfectly clear? If there are any doubts here, I uh, kindly let me know. 
Let me reset the poll, bring up a yes no poll very quickly. If this is perfectly clear, say yes, so that I can now talk about how to go about solving this question. Yes, okay, good, fine. So now guys, let's talk about just one case because if you understand one of them, uh, the understanding list is pretty easy, frankly speaking, okay? So let's take uh, the first and the last case, okay? If this is clear, and since you're talking about a five letter word, let me rub everything else. Let me just focus on one, two, three, four, five, okay? Let's talk about this, okay? If repetition is allowed, can you tell me in how many ways can I fill this first space? In how many ways can I fill it? Can anyone tell me please, very quickly? You have D, E, P, A, R, T, six alphabets. In, and repetition is allowed. There's no restriction as such, except that it needs to be a palindrome. In how many ways can I fill the first space? Six, right? Uh, Pankaj, why five, six, there are six letters. Okay, six, good. So I'll fill this in six ways. Let me fill that, okay. Now tell me, the moment I fix something here, let's take an example, and I hopefully after taking the example, it's clear. Let's say I place a place A here, let's say. I can place anything, D, E, P, R, T, anything. But if I place A here or whatever I'm placing here, what can I place here? If I place an A here, what will I place here? Can anyone tell me? If I place A in the first, what will I place in the last uh, space? Anyone? Last letter will also be fixed, Harshit. Very good. So uh, the last letter will also be A, right? It has to be A, right? Okay. So can I say, that whatever I'm choosing here, I need to put the same thing here. So if I choose A here, there's only one way to fill it. I have to put A here. There's no other way out. Are you getting my point? There's only one way to fill it. The last space, the moment I fix this, the moment I say, hey, this place can be filled in six ways. I'm, I'm using the filling space method, by the way. So if I fill this in six ways, this place can be filled in only one way. Is this part clear? This is the main crux. If this is clear, the rest of them is absolutely easy, believe me. But whether this part is clear or not. If I'm filling the first space with A, I need to fill the last one with A. Okay, the first place can be filled with anything, any of the six. Okay, but the last place can be filled in one way only. I've put a yes and no poll. If there's any questions, please ask. This is clear, right? Uh, very good, this is clear, that's nice. Okay, again, there's no problem with no repetition is allowed, everything is there with me. So obviously if I fill the second one in six ways, okay, can you tell me in how many ways can I fill this one now? Because this needs to be the same, this needs to be the same. So in how many ways can I fill this? If you can tell this answer correctly, believe me, you've understood this question. There's nothing as much there and, uh, that you need to do. In how many ways can I fill that? The one that I put a question mark. In how many ways can I fill that space? Yes, Pratik, absolutely correct. For selecting first will automatically select the last one. Harshit, you are correct. It has to be one. Anyone else? One. Yes, good. Please understand it has to be one, okay? Because it's the same logic. I just, I need to choose it only in one way. Or an easier way to say it, hey, for both these places, for both these places, I have to choose just one alphabet. That's, that's another way to think about it. I just need to choose one alphabet. I can do that in six ways. Now, this middle guy is free. It does not have any restriction, nothing at all. It can be anything, okay? So this can also be filled in six ways. So the answer in this case would be two, one, six. If you have any questions, please ask. Again, as I told you, it's a GMAT prep question, official question. You may, you may come across these kind of questions. It could be in the form of words. It could be form in the, in, in the form of numbers also. Yes, Pankaj, six ways for middle one as well. Absolutely correct. Okay, uh, so let me bring up the poll once again very quickly. If this is clear, guys, please mark yes. Yes, uh, A, 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 all A's is also considered a palindrome. It has to be symmetric, that's all. Uh, sheesh, unfortunately, this has to be done in this way only. Uh, this, I would say, is a 650 level question, uh, Harshit. I wouldn't put it in a 700 level question. 
Ashwari, as I told you, there are no restrictions. No restrictions. You're focusing on the word five. You're focusing on the word five. There are six letters with me. I can put anything that I want to. Again, I told you there was uh, so there. I should have added that letters should be used, can be used more than once to gain more clarity. But I hope uh, now it's clear why it should be six, Ashwarya. Okay, I can see all yeses. Everyone is saying that it's clear. So now let's move on to the last question of competition commission. It's a really good one, right? And of my favorite, one of my favorite questions. So give it a shot. Yes, Himanshu, this was easier than the last one. But believe me, this question, question number four, if you haven't done this before, you are going to have a hard time. It's a very good question. And again, it's an official question, by the way. Okay, another 30 seconds, guys. Some of you mark the answer very quickly. Uh, so I'm assuming that you know how to do this. Also, I would say till I end the poll, uh, I would request not to ask where what the answer is in the chat, okay? Okay, Niti says, I know the trick, but don't know the logic. <laughs> That's okay. I am going to talk about it. This is kind of a famous question that you get in Indian exams also. Uh, recently, GMAT kind of introduced this in their uh, in their advanced book. Okay, guys, I'm going to end the poll now. Uh, I can see that about 35% of you said the answer is A, but I have a lot of people who answered C, B, D. Can you tell me what logic were you applying to solve this question? What logic were you using to solve this question? Anyone? And I'm asking this to people who don't know how to solve it. Okay, those who marked the correct answer, I would like to say, hey, pause, I'll tell you how to do it. But those of you who have seen this question for the first time, trying it to do it, uh, trying to do it for the first time, what, what did you do? Okay, Nitish, you wrote that trick. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? What did you do? How did you get, say, 630 or 2880 or 3025? Okay, look at says 9 factorial by 5 factorial times 4 factorial. Adela says we have 25 points with two options every one. Okay, I uh, 
kind of don't get what you're trying to say. 25 points I'm clear with, but what are you doing with two options? Okay, and then he'll say five ways down, four ways right. This was only I could do, which is good. Five ways down, four ways right. That's a good start, I would say. That's a very good start. Okay, uh, Nikita, that's also a good way to go about it. Frankly, I would say I, I'm being very frank here. Uh, most of the people who get this question the first time, I, I doubt they will be able to do this. I'm, I'm being very blunt here. Uh, even uh, I had a hard time doing it for the first time. And as I told you, we have got, we have seen these questions in Indian exams also. But anyways, uh, we have it in front of us. We need to solve it. Let's see how we can do it. So uh, in questions like these, let me just give you a brief uh, background here. In questions like these where you are given a grid, okay, and where you are asked to go from one point to the other point, what they uh, they will always give you certain restrictions, okay? The restrictions are in the way that person can move, because if there are no restrictions, then there is uh, then the person can go anywhere he would like to go, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, come back again, right? He can go on doing like this. So they will always give you restrictions. Uh, the restriction is like in this case, the person is going from X to Y. So they and and the restrictions are always constant, standard restrictions. I'm telling you, the restrictions are like this. They'll tell you, hey, this person can move right, and this person can move down. These are the only two options that that he has. Okay, he cannot do anything else. These are the only two options. So if he has to go to X to Y, say for example, if I move right like this, I go right here, right here, and if I want to take a left, I cannot do that. That's not possible. So if I've taken two rights, I can again go right. Or if I want to go down, I can go down. I can go down like this. But if I've gone down, if I want to move up, not possible. Okay. So the idea is that I have to go right. I have to go down. That's number one inference that you should have in your mind. Very clear. Not an inference, but you should be able to read it and be very clear with it. The second thing what you need to do is try and figure out, hey, whatever path he takes, uh, how many rights and how many downs is he taking? Okay, uh, and that is something that you can do is by just uh, making some cases. So easiest cases like this, right? Right, 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 down, 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 down. So basically, I'm moving four rights and five down. Okay, that's one case. Uh, let's say let, let me take another case, right? Let me say I go down. Okay, I take a right. Okay. Then say I go down again. I take a right, say. Uh, I feel like taking a right again, so let me take a right. Let me go down. Let me go down. Let me go down. And then I, let me take a right. Okay, and in this way, what you can do is you can write down some cases. But here is a very interesting thing that you will notice. What you'll notice here is that Whatever path you take, I've written two. I, I'm just writing down one more very quickly. This one is the easiest one to write down. I can go all downs, five downs, one, two, three, four, five, and I can take rights, four rights, right? I can take four rights. Now, whatever path I choose, okay, uh, I'll always be taking, I'll be going five down and four right. Is this part clear or not? Please uh, let me bring up a yes and no poll just to be sure about this. Please let me know if this is clear or not. Yes, Tariq, you're absolutely correct. There'll always be five downs and four rights, always. Whatever you do, five downs, four rights. Anyone has any questions on this one? If this is perfectly clear, you can mark yes so that I can move on. Okay, good. Now, here's an interesting thing that, you, that uh, I want you to notice, okay? Once you get this clear, that okay i can take five uh, i need to take five downs and four rights okay five down and four rights and once you write down three cases notice something peculiar uh, think of these as alphabets think of these as alphabets okay think of these as alphabets now every arrangement every arrangement of this alphabet is basically giving you a route to reach from x to y now, if I arrange it like this, I get a root. If I arrange it like this, this is another root. If I arrange like this, D, D, R, R, D, D, R, R, D, if I arrange it like this, this would tell me, hey, this guy took two down, two right, two down, two right, and one down. Okay. Yes, the, the crux to this question, whether you're able to assimilate it in this form or not. If you have any doubts here, please ask. I've added a yes or no poll. 
please let me know if there's any issues here. Any issues at all? There shouldn't be any, hopefully. So basically the inference that you need to make here is that all you need to do is find out in how many ways you can arrange this nine letter word, the, the number of ways in which you can arrange will actually tell me the number of ways in which it can go from X to Y. Now there are nine letters here, so I can arrange it in nine factorial ways, but there are five D's, they are all the same. Now notice again, I just want to be very clear. If I, array, if I, if I swap this, it's not going to make any change, right? If I write it, this D here, this D here doesn't matter. I'm still taking two D's. Okay, so it's acting like an alphabet only. Okay, so I have five D's, so I'll divide by five factorial, four D's, I'll divide by four factorial. And the, so if you simplify it, the answer that you'll get is 126. Now tell me if you have any questions, any doubts, please ask. Any doubts at all? Anyone? You can post it in the chat. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, I'm not getting any responses in the chat. So guys, what happened? Is this clear? If you have any questions, please ask. I hope, uh, uh, I think uh, someone said that the, the logic wasn't clear. Nitish, I hope now the logic is clear, right? I hope this is perfectly clear. If you have any doubts, please ask. Anything at all. There are other ways to do it. I'll be more than happy to show you, but uh, you won't need it. This is the best way to do it. There's a counting way also, just to be uh, clear. I can actually count till 126, but uh, Dhruv, there can be a stop. Frankly speaking, there can be a stop and I can still solve this question. That's not a problem. I can still solve it. Uh, Okay, uh, down or right, that basically that means is that when you're saying 126, you're taking all cases which has down or right, okay? Down or right means to say that he is open to take whatever he wants to take. But if you say 126 cases they pick up by just taking down, that's wrong actually. He cannot just take all downs and do, and do it in 126 ways, that's not possible. Okay, uh, Dhruv, as I told you, that's not a problem. I will not get into the question, but I'll just tell you one thing, that if you get a question like this, don't worry. Like say, for example, same question. Uh, and let's say, um, let's say I do something like this. Something like this, say for example, okay. Um, Mm, I, mm, just one sec guys, I'm trying to figure out a question that might something like this say, okay, I'm not really good at drawing. So you might get questions and they, these are also, uh, free, uh, these are not really frequently asked. So you might get questions like this, hey, uh, the guy wants to move from X to Y, uh, in how many ways can go from X to Y in the shortest path, okay, and they'll give you a, a diagonal like this. They'll uh, and what they're basically telling you is go from this point to this point and from this point to this point in how many ways can you do it? You can get a question like this. That's not a problem. Can anyone tell me how to solve this one? That's a good question, Dhruv. I would say uh, Dhruv has asked a very good question and I want you, let's give it a shot, guys. Uh, let's take just a minute, uh, a minute and a half. This is the calculation is really easy. Okay. Uh, can you tell me if I want to go from X to P P to Q, uh, shortest path, okay? Keep in mind shortest path. So I'll be taking this diagonal. I won't be going like this, okay? I'm taking this path or you can take it doesn't, uh, for the sake of clarity, X to P, P to Q via diagonal and say Q to Y, okay? And I want to reach Y in how many ways can I do it? Same conditions, I can go down and write nothing else. Down right is possible, but that is all is possible. You cannot go up, you cannot go left. Can anyone solve this quickly? Yes, Ishan, you need to make cases. This is again, making cases question. So if you have understood X to Y clearly, if the logic is clear, what I did, you will be able to solve this. Uh, anyone should be able to solve this question within one and a half minute, not more than that. Uh, frankly, one minute 
at the max. Can anyone very quickly tell me what is the answer? And Dhruv, I'll answer your question, what we need to do. Deepika, okay. Anyone else? I am not commenting whether the answer is correct or incorrect. Uh, even I don't know the answer. I just made the diagram now only. Okay. Pankaj says 105. Jitin says 18. Okay. Nitish says 6 to 6. Okay. Uh, Nitish, uh, look at the diagram carefully. Look at Q to Y. I think you made a small mistake. Shantan says 70. Indranil says I think it should be 6 plus 6 plus 6. Shiri says 19. Likhit, okay. Now this is where the fundamental and an or comes into picture. Okay. What do you need to do? Uh, Dhruv asked me a question, and that's a very good question he asked. Should I do and or or after finding out the cases? So let's first of all figure out. Let's look at x to p. Notice I am going to right and two down. Okay. So I'm going uh, basically not to right, two down. Uh, in whatever way I go from x to p in the shortest path, I'll be taking this as the shortest path. Okay. I'll be taking two rights and two downs to reach it. These are again alphabets. So you can simply say four factorial by two factorial times two factorial, which is six. So from X to P, and I'm writing all these here from X to P, I can go in six ways. From P to Q, I'll take just the diagonal and the diagonal can be taken in only one way. Okay. From Q to Y, notice carefully, there's just one right and two down. Again, I can take like this also, but whatever path that I choose, okay, there has two, uh, it has two down and one right. So it's basically like this D, D, R. So this is three factorial by two factorial, which is three. So Q, two by is three. And now the question, which is a problem for everybody, should I add this up or should I multiply? Dhruv says we must use and very good. See, understand I need to reach from X to Y. Okay. So to reach to X to Y, this is how I frame it. If whenever I have a confusion, what I do is I talk to myself and I say, okay, I need to go to X to Y. So what am I doing? Am I to reach to X to Y? Do I have to do this? Uh, do I have to do X? Do I have to go to X to P or P to Q or Q to Y? Are these optional? to reach Y, they are not optional, right? I have to go through P to Q to reach Y. So I have to take, I have to go from X to P and I have to take the path from P to Q and I have to take the path from Q to Y to reach my destination. Otherwise I won't be able to reach it. That is why this will be and. So the answer would be six times one times three, which is 18. So if any questions, please ask. This is how you need to do it. So if they give you a path, if you make a gap, it doesn't matter. If your concept is clear, you will be able to do it. Okay. So guys, I'm now moving to the next question. Uh, I don't think there's any more doubt here. Uh, so if you get questions like this, just ace it, guys. Now let's look at probability questions. And I'm starting with some easy ones first, and then I'll move on to difficult ones. Okay, so here's the fifth question. I've added the poll also. Hey Nitish, I told you, uh, uh, I did, I think, mention the question that we just need to move only diagonally. That's all. That is what I mentioned, actually. You can move just diagonally. Okay. If the word, if the diagonal would not have been given, then the multiplying by two was correct. What you did was correct, Nitish.
another 30 seconds guys this is an easy one you all of you should be able to do this easily especially those who have attended the first session another 10 seconds i would request all of you to put in your responses those who haven't kindly do so it's okay if you get it wrong as i told you it's totally okay uh, just think what what you think uh, just mark something which you think could be the right one that's that's all i want Okay. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. Okay, so I have about seventy-two percent of people who think the answer should be A, and uh, uh, about eighteen percent. That that's the highest I would say. Uh, with four by nine, so most of you are saying the answer should be five by eighteen. Okay, first of all, uh, was it a pleasant change from the quest from the question that you were doing? Did you find this easy? So far, we have been discussing four solid difficult questions. How did you find this one? Okay, this was slightly easy, right? This was pure play selection question. There's just one mistake that some a few of you might make. Uh, that is why I just wanted to discuss it. Uh, but since most of you have got it correct, I'll try to be as quick as possible, not wasting more time on this question because we have more questions to discuss. So I'll be very quick, and I'm I'm solving it just here only. So I have nine people, and nine people includes Mary and Anna. Uh, I need to select four people. Okay, so out of nine, I need to select four. Okay. Uh, the question is, what is the probability that the four people selected would include Anna? So I need Anna definitely out of those four people, and I don't want George. Okay. Now, first of all, uh, when I'm trying to find out the probability, what I do is uh, because in this case the easiest is to figure out the total cases. Okay. I need to select four out of nine. So the total cases possible would simply be nine C. Four. Select four out of nine. So total cases done. Easy. Okay. Now let's come to the favorable cases. Now in the favorable cases, what I need to, what you need to understand is that Anna is already fixed. There's no question about it. She has to be in the team. So I don't need to worry about her. Okay. She is there in the team. So I have to select her. Okay. So I can select her in one way. So either write it or ignore it. Simply say, hey, I need Anna. Anna can be selected in one way because she needs to be in the team. Okay. Now I need to worry about those three people that I need to select. Okay. Now, if Anna is selected, I'm left with eight people. But I have all, I have I have a constraint saying that I cannot have George in the team. That's my favorable case. If Anna is there, George shouldn't be there. So instead of eight, since I cannot take George, I have seven options with me. Okay. I have seven options to choose from uh, the, these three people that I want out of these seven. Okay. So what I can write is I need to select three out of seven, and that can be done in seven C. Three ways. Okay, so I hope this is perfectly clear, guys. If there are any doubts, please ask. Anything at all? I can see all of you are saying it's easy. Yes, I agree. It's definitely easy. Almost everyone should be able to get these kind of questions correct. Okay. Again, I'm not going to the simplification. Uh, if you want, I can do it. But the idea is very simple. Well, once you solve it, you would get five by eighteen. So I'm not going to the calculation. I hope the explanation is clear. Because there are more difficult questions that we need to discuss. Okay, so I can see all of you are saying it's clear, it's easy. So I will move on to the next one, guys. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is an interesting question. Now, if you have uh, if you have understood whatever we have discussed so far, the first five questions, uh, especially the first four questions, uh, you should be able to do it. Okay.
And here's the poll for the sixth question. Mm. Dhruv, there might be a lag in my voice, but I don't think uh, uh, there's no voice as such. I think I'm audible. I want to give a small hint so that you are able to solve this uh, correctly. Keep in mind that books are identical. History books are identical. Geography books are identical. Okay. Mathematics books are identical. There's a reason I use the word identical. So while marking the answer, keep that in mind. Okay, I'm giving you another 30 seconds. Okay, another 10 seconds, then I'll end the poll. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. Guys, so let's see what the result is. Hmm. So 50% of you think that the answer should be C, but I have a healthy number of people who think the answer should be E, B, 22%, 22% equally who think the answer should be B and E. And there's a reason for giving this question, guys. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, and you'll understand the mistake that uh, most of you made. I'll, I'll discuss that. But before that, I want your opinion. Um, above this question. Did you find this difficult or was it easy to solve? What did you think of this question? By the way, the accuracy is increasing in difficult questions. Uh, but I would like to know, what do you think of this question? What did you find it tough? Was it easy, tricky? Okay, Surabhi says it's easy, okay. Likit says it's moderate, easy, okay, okay, okay. Dhruv again says gives the same answer, depends on the answer. You can tell me your answer. Whenever you give this line, just, just do mention your answer also so I can uh, 
tell you whether it's correct or not. Arun says it's easy unless there's a trick. Okay, Arun, uh, everybody, let me ask you a question. Uh, you will get to know whether you have done it correctly or not. Okay, just one simple question. You have 10 books, as you can see here. If you're arranging them in a row, 10 books without any restriction, in how many ways can you do it? 10 books, arranging them in a row, you are arranging them in a row, in how many ways can you do it? Okay, Harshit says 10 factorial, 10 factorial if different, very good, Benoit. 10 factorial if different is correct. So I did not mention what kind of books I'm arranging. See, the moment you're answering 10 factorial, you're falling for a trap. Uh, if you need to understand, and you need to be very clear with this, the books that you're arranging, what kind of books do you have? There are two kinds of questions. If you always keep that in mind, you'll never make a mistake. Remember the questions of alphabets and, uh, and uh, Alphabets with uh, repetition, alphabets without repetition. Avinav, absolutely correct. This is very. This is the key here. You need to understand whether the books are identical or distinct. So those of you who uh, went on saying 10 factorial is the total number of cases, you fell for the trap. Okay. Now let me make this clear once and for all so that you don't make mistakes like these ever again. Number one thing, if you have 10 books, Okay, and all are different. All are different, right? Think of it this way, 10, uh, 10, if I give you 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 0. If I give you all these numbers, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. If I ask you, hey, arrange, uh, let me not take 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay? If I tell you, hey, you have 9 digits, 9 places, fill them up. Uh, in nine places, how many ways you will do it? You can blindly say, hey, nine factorial is my answer. That's correct. Because all are distinct. That is why you are able to say nine factorial. This is very important. Distinct is the word, keyword here. Okay. So if there are 10 books, all different, you're more than welcome. Please uh, say 10 factorial. But the moment things are uh, identical, if there are books which are identical, you cannot solve it the way you're solving this numbers, or even if you take alphabets, if I give you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, whatever, if I give you, uh, you're you're more than welcome to write this as 10 factorial, okay, not a problem, uh, okay? Uh, I've taken 10, right, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, E, F, yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yeah, 10 factorial, you can write it, not a problem, okay? But if I just give you a two A's, okay, and then I give you B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, here things changes, here you have to say 10 factorial by 2 factorial, because you have two A's. That is the story here also. The problem is that you have identical, three identical history books. So those three identical history books can be written as H, H, H. They are not H1, H2, H3. Keep this in mind, that's the difference. That's the reason I give you this. Yes, Harshit, you're correct. That is what you need to do that, okay? I'll talk about the favorable cases also, don't worry. But this is what you need to do. Adhru, repetition is, uh, yeah, Dhruv, I understand. So basically when I'm explaining this, I'm keeping in mind that repetition is not allowed, okay? My bad, but I'm doing this when repetition is not allowed, okay? But the idea is that you have HHH in this case, you have five Gs, okay? And you have two Ms. So if I have to arrange them in a shelf, uh, I can do that in 10 factorial by three factorial times two factorial times five factorial. Okay, if you have any doubts here, please ask because then I'll move on to the favorable cases. So keep this in mind, if they're all distinct, books are distinct, okay? Numbers, obviously, when I was talking about, I was not allowing repetition. Uh, if books are different, no problem, 10 factorial. If they're similar, you have to take that into account, write them as alphabets and then solve them, okay? Now let's come to favorable cases. Yes, like it, you're correct. Now I'm talking about all the books, say, books. If you write it like this, no, things will become easy for you. Now I need the same books, same topic books to be together. So all history books need to be together. So think of them as one block. Wherever you move them, you have to move them in one uh, uh, together, okay? These five geography books are one block. Wherever I place them in the shelf, I have to place them in one go, in one way, okay? And I have two M's. This is another block. So this is block one, block two, block three. So when I'm putting them in a shelf, I can 
put block one here, block two here, block three here. I can put block one here, block three here, block two here, something like this, okay? Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to tell me in how many ways can I arrange these three blocks? In how many ways can I do it? If you have understood my explanation, you should be able to tell me in how many ways can I arrange these three blocks? That's my favorable case. Can anyone tell me? Likit has given me the correct answer. Anyone else? Yes, Ashwari, that's correct. Absolutely good. See, these are three distinct blocks. So Pankaj, Harshit, everybody is correct. No, when I'm saying books of same topics are kept together, so that's understood that I need to keep all the books together, okay? I cannot just say two books are together. I cannot say uh, like this, uh, HH is, uh, H H is here, uh, G G G G G H. So can you say, uh, sorry, M M? Can I say uh, history uh, books of all topics are together? It's it's not true, right? Because history books are not together. Okay, so I hope that answers your query. But everybody has got it correct. It's correct that it has can be done in three factorial ways. So your favorable case is three factorial. Your total case is ten factorial by three factorial times two factorial. Okay. Uh, let me just simplify it here only. This would give this would be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 by 6 times 2. Okay, uh, now let me just cancel stuff. Uh, let me cancel the 6. Let me cancel it here. Okay, so basically what I'm getting here is 6 divided by 10 times 9 times 4 times 7, if I'm correct. Yes, and this would give you 1 by 420. Okay, you can cancel two and three to get one by 420. If you have any doubts, ask. They are identical books, Pankaj. That's what I've been trying to explain. That was the, the, the first thing that I talked about in the starting. All this explanation that I was doing here was with respect to that only. If the books are identical, they cannot arrange among themselves. I getting my point. This is the difference between a question where all the books are distinct and all the books are identical. The distinct questions are always easy. You know you need to arrange everything. Okay, it's only an identical type of questions where most people falter. So I hope Pankaj now this is clear why the books will not arrange within the block as well because they are all identical. Arranging them will not give me any new case. Okay, so I hope guys after solving this question, you will never fall for traps like this. Kindly mark yes if this is perfectly clear. I hope this is clear now that when you're uh, the, it's perfectly clear the difference between identical and distinct kind of questions. Okay, I can see all of you are saying yes, which is absolutely good. Um, okay, in the interest of time, let me uh, do two more questions. Let's do uh, this one and we'll do the last one, okay? Let's do this one, question number seven, and then we'll do the last question. I am bringing up the poll, just one sec. Okay, I have an interesting result so far. Hmm. 
very interesting result, frankly speaking. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Just to give you clarity, since you have time, when I'm saying the probability of not passing in any of the exams means the probability of not passing both the exams. I'm talking about both the exams together. The probability of not passing both the exams is 0.4. So if there if there's any source of confusion there, I hope it's clear now. If there wasn't, then that's okay. Just ignore what I'm saying. The probability of not passing both the exams is 0.4. Okay, 10 seconds more, then I'll end the poll. Okay, so as you can see, a very interesting result. At one point of time, I had almost uh, 10 to 15% in all the five options, frankly speaking. But you have chosen, uh, but uh, you chose options which are the most frequently chosen options in the exam, frankly speaking. Now, uh, Dhruva, I'll tell you what the answer is, don't worry, okay? Now, uh, tell me, let's talk in the same way. Let's tell me, how did you find this question? Was it difficult? Again, uh, Dhruva, I know your answer now. So, but that's fine. What about the others, guys? How did you find the question? Pankaj, Nitish, Nikita, Deepika, Karishma, Rahul, what do you think? Binoy, Sahil, tell me. Sanjay, Ishan, Harshit, Ashwarya, what do you think? Did you find this question difficult or was this easy? Okay, Harshit is saying tough. Okay, this is again a very common question, guys, a very common type of question where they will talk about some people passing, people failing, uh, uh, people uh, not reaching on time, people reaching on time, those kind of questions where there's just black and white, okay? Those kind of questions are, are quite common in the GMAT. That's the reason I chose this question. And frankly, we haven't done any PS yet. So I wanted to do it. Okay, Rahul says it's easy. Very good. Nikita, it was easy. Okay, uh, Rahul, Nikita, what was the answer that you marked? And you can send me a private chat. That's okay. What did you mark? I'm, in I'm interested in knowing. Uh, if you're saying it's easy, and send me a private chat, what do you think was the answer? Mukarishma is saying moderate. Okay. Okay, Likit, it was easy. Sanjay, tough. Okay, uh, the question I would say it falls under the category of medium, medium, hard. Okay, I would not categorize this as an easy question. Frankly, those who are aware of the, of the, uh, I won't say trick to solve the question, but those who are aware what really needs to be done in this kind of question, uh, you will get this answer correct. Okay, okay. Uh, Likit Nikita, thanks for telling me what you have marked. Now let's, let's talk about this question. How do you solve it? Okay, so Anna gave two exams. That's very clear. One was in history. The other was geography. Fine. Now, uh, I've been told that both the exams are independent events. Now, what do I mean by that is that the probability of history and geography are not dependent on each other. Okay. So if I say uh, there's no overlap as such, they're independent events. The probability of uh, one happening is not dependent on the other happening. And this is something which we give so that you don't start thinking in terms of conditional probability and all those stuff. Okay, so in simple terms, understand they are happening on their own particular day and uh, the probability of passing on failing will that depend on solely on that exam. Okay, what I need to find is what is the probability that she'll pass both the exams. So I need to find out probability where she'll pass in history and she will pass in uh, geography also. That is what I need to find out. Okay, now uh, tell me uh, in how many ways can Anna pass or fail the exam? What are the possibilities? You're taking two exams, right? You're, you have been taking exams, right? You go, go to the college and you take the exam. 
what is going to happen what are the possible cases that are uh, that can exist can anyone tell me what are the various ways uh, you know, that's absolutely correct four ways that's absolutely correct uh no 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 i'm not asking the probability guys i'm asking in how many ways uh she can pass or fail okay uh so the different ways like for example she can pass in history let me write it this way she can pass in history pass in geography okay she can pass in history fail in geography she can fail in history pass in geography and she can fail in both of them okay and what i'm interested in is this probability what is the probability that she is passing in both of them okay i hope this part is clear i maybe i did not frame the uh, question properly but i hope this is clear that these are the four ways in which anything can happen okay now let's uh, make uh, the thing that we are trying to find out is pass pass okay now let's say if i tell you the probability of uh, passing of history is say uh, ph and the probability of passing in geography is pg okay then what is the probability that they will pass in both the uh, uh, both the subjects what will be the probability can anyone tell me again i'll frame the question much more clearly guys so that's perfectly clear see in history she can pass let me write it as ph and she can fail so let me write it as fh fail in history okay now she can pass in geography and she can pass in fail in geography okay these are the probabilities okay now tell me if i want to find the probability that she'll pass in both the exams how will i find it okay nitish absolutely correct so yes absolutely good right so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the p uh, she's passing in history and she's passing in uh geography this is what i need to find out good so this is perfectly clear out of the way we don't have any problems with this okay so let's jump into the first statement first statement is the probability of not passing in any of the exams and i clarified it when i say any of any of the exams that i mean both the exams is 0.4 so the probability that she did not pass in uh, any of the exams is 0.4 now out of these four cases which probability are we talking about out of these four cases which uh, 0.4 represents what can anyone tell me the fourth one right it represents the fourth one the probability that she does, does not uh, pass in any of the exam is 0.4 so i can say the probability that she failed in history and the probability that she failed in geography the multiplication of these two is equal to 0.4 but i don't need this obviously i'm looking for this and i just knowing this i cannot find out my answer right because i don't know what is the probability of uh, passing and failing in history obviously this thing should be clear that the probability for history so probability uh, i'm running out of space but i'll write it here very quickly the probability that she will pass and the probability that she will fail this is equal to 1 okay but i don't know the individual i don't know anything here i don't know anything at all out of these cases so i can discard this statement so if i have my options as a b c d e i can say my answers cannot be a or d because statement 1 is definitely not sufficient okay so i hope this is clear okay let's go to the second statement the second statement tells me that the probability of passing only in history exam is 0.5 passing only in history exam okay fine so now they are telling me just one of them so they are telling me 0.5 okay but i still don't know what is the probability of uh, anna passing in geography i don't know that okay since i don't know that i will not be able to find out my answer so even this statement is not sufficient so both these statements are not sufficient so my answer cannot be a b or d it either has to be c or it has to be e so i hope till here it is perfectly clear so those of the guys who marked a as your answer i know what mistake that you made what you thought was hey uh, they are failing in both they are passing in both let me subtract them and get the answer as 0.6 that is the mistake that 23% of you made please keep in mind in questions like these you need to make cases to solve the question okay don't simply jump into saying uh, 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 that it will be 
total pass or total fail there are no other possibilities there are these two possibilities that you fail to consider because of which you mark the answer as a okay now let's talk about c or e what will be the case now here's an interesting thing notice this that uh, as i told you the probability of passing and failing for history the sum obviously has to be one so if i'm saying that the probability that she pass is 0.5 the probability of passing only in history is 0.5 then that means the probability of failing in history exam now i'm combining both of them keep this in mind now probability of failing would also be 0.5 so now notice i know this value i know this is 0.5 I know this is 0.5. So now I can find out the probability of failing in geography is 0.4 by 0.5, which is 0.8. I can find this out. Now, how does this help me? Again, the probability of passing and failing in geography, the probability of passing and failing in geography is equal to the sum of this has to be one. So either it will pass or fail. Now, if I know that she's the probability of failing is 0.8 then obviously the probability of passing is 0.2. So now I have both the values. I have 0.5, I have 0.2. So I can find out the probability that she will pass in both. The, what will be the probability that she will pass in both the exams? So guys, please, yeah, the absolute, so guys, please tell me if this is perfectly clear or not. Uh, Likit, I did not understand your question. I thought those were the probabilities of her failing separately in both. Uh, which statement are you talking about, Likit? Uh, I hope for the remaining people, it's perfectly clear. Uh, if there are any doubts, please ask. Let me bring up the yes and no query very quickly. Uh, here's the poll. If this is clear, please mark yes. So see, why did I give you this question? Uh, why did, the reason I gave you this question was because I wanted to make sure that uh, this is perfectly clear that you need to consider all these four cases that they can be pass, 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 fail, fail, pass and fail, fail. You don't need to just consider pass, pass and fail, fail to solve the question. Uh, yes, like that is why I cleared it. Okay, I got the problem. I, I understood what you made, the mistake that you made is. That's why I cleared it. The probability of not passing in both the exam is 0.4. I did say that. Uh, but if you made the mistake because of that, that's totally okay. That's that's a fault from my end. I should have written both, not any. That So you might, you might have made a mistake of thinking both as 0.4. Okay, so don't count that as a wrong one. Okay. Guys, we are running out of time. So I'll if there's still any questions on this, any kind of questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, Post this session, I would just want to do one last question, okay? Uh, where I just want to talk about uh, questions where uh, you might have to use application. There, there might be application of something totally different. It might not even be probability at all, okay? You, uh, so and this question that I'm giving you is to tell you the importance of other topics also, not uh, and knowing just the basic formula also. So just knowing the basic formula and being strong in other topics uh, can also help you get the question. And this is a close replica of the official question, guys. So give it your best shot and we'll discuss this. And let me bring up the poll very quickly. And again, if you have any questions related to the last uh, last question that we discussed, uh, please feel free to ask uh, later on. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, but we are already exceeding our time. So I just want to do this last one quickly. I've added the poll. Try this one out.
Okay, just to clear, one in fifteen both inclusive. Whenever the word inclusive is added after between, that means I need to include both fifteen and one. Okay, I'm including both of them. That is how it is written in GMAT. They'll if they want, they want you to include both of them. They would write inclusive, both inclusive, something like that. Uh, if the answer is not matching, I just don't worry. We'll check it very quickly. The answer is not matching. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. I can see a lot of responses. Okay, guys. I'm ending the poll now. Let's discuss this very quickly. And uh, okay, tell me, how do you solve such questions? What do you do? How do you approach such questions? Okay, Dhruv is saying 14. Ayush is saying 13. Guys, if there's a mistake in the answer choices, uh, that's totally okay. I'll help you. I'll, I'll just check it. Not a problem, Dhruv. Dhruv, Ayush, that's totally okay. If you're not getting the answers, we'll quickly check it out. Okay. But uh, let's answer. Le, le, tell me, how did you find this question, and what was the approach that you use? Solving inequalities, I mean, okay. That's correct. Negative values lies between two and nine. Write the quadratic as a product of two. Absolutely good. So, guys, can you see uh, that in questions like these, uh, there is no use of probability at all except for the formula, right? And this is, an, as I told you, this is a close replica of an official question where they are just asking the probability by giving an equation, and somebody might get stumped, thinking, "Hey, what is this question all about?" Right? But As you can see, there's nothing that you need to do here. All all they're saying is, y is equal to this. Okay, so I can say x square uh, x square minus 11x plus 18 is equal to y, and I need to figure out uh, what is the probability for a given value of x, the value of y is less than equal to zero. Now I know why is this, and I I want to figure out when is this less than equal to zero. So they are basically giving you an inequality. and they are asking you to figure out if the if the constraint is 1 is to 15 if x is between 1 and 15 they are taking only positive integers values what value should i put here so that i get less than equal to 0 now good thing is that all, all of you said inequalities thank god very good i was hoping that nobody was putting values in it you don't need to do that all you need to do is and those of you who have attended our algebra session we uh, talk about these also that this is a simple number line question you just need to figure out when is this possible So what you do is, you first of all break it down like this. You form a quadratic. Uh, you factorize it basically, and write it in this way. Now, how is this helpful? Now, those of you who aren't, uh, uh, who haven't done inequality, just that's totally okay, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is something which I teach in algebra video lessons. If you want to see the video lesson of algebra, I would highly recommend that you go through it. You simply mark these two points. Two and nine, okay, and you start from the extreme right, and start marking alternatively positive, negative, positive. Okay, you are looking for less than equal to zero. So basically, you look where less than equal to zero basically means negative or zero, right? So you see where the negative is, in which range it is negative. It is negative in this range. Okay. So if it is negative in this range, then that means all integer values which fall within this one to fifteen, and which are less than equal to zero. So my favorable cases are basically two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are my favorable cases. If anyone has any doubt, please ask. And also keep in mind when you're finding the total number of integers, you need to do it like this: nine minus two. uh plus 1 please make sure that you don't make a mistake of not adding plus 1 because you need to include these two values also because for x equal to 2 and x equal to 9 both will become 0 and for whatever value that you take in between okay for that it will be negative so total number of cases favorable cases is 8 okay total favorable cases is 8 total number of cases both inclusive is 15 so my answer is going to be 8 upon 15 If anyone has any doubt, please ask. Because I saw somebody saying 
14, I saw somebody saying uh, 13. Uh, uh, it seems that you flipped it. Instead of doing y less than or equal to 0, you did y greater than or equal to 0. Uh, look at the 2 and 9 are included because uh, I'm looking for less than or equal to 0. So when I put x equal to 2 here, when I put x equal to 2 here, this would become 0. That's why I'm including 2. And if I put x equal to 9 here, this will become 0. So I need to satisfy this equal to 0 case also. That is why I need to include 2 and 9. Less than or equal to, yes. Less than or equal to. That's correct, Likit. Any other questions, anyone, please feel free to ask. I have about two to three minutes more. And then uh, I have to... So I can take any Q&A sessions if you if you have any general questions. I use says I use hit and trial and use that only for value x equal to one, and then y will be positive rest. Um, you can see Ayush, I I'm still not very clear if you're asking a question. You're telling your method. Uh, if you want to use hit and trial, see the number of cases are less. I, that is what I would say. Okay, so the number of cases are less, so that's not a problem. Okay, so you can, you are okay, you are totally okay to take uh, the, those cases one by one and check it if you want to. That's totally okay if you want to do that. Uh, Ashwarya, mutually exclusive events are basically events that cannot basically happen at the same time. Okay, so for example, uh, probability of passing and failing okay they are mutually exclusive events why i'm saying mutually exclusive events because if i'm passing in history i cannot fail at the same time okay so i hope this part is clear when i say mutually exclusive mutually exclusive means uh, both event cannot happen simultaneously and when i'm saying independent events that means the the event of his uh, of one does not affect the other so whatever is happening in history the probability of passing and failing is not going to affect whatever is going to happen in geography passing and failing so i hope this part is clear okay you are actually uh, applying this ashwarya okay you are actually applying it but the thing is that you are uh, applying it un uh, unconsciously basically you're not doing it uh, deliberately so when i say probability of passing and failing is 0.4 and 0.6 you are basically applying mutually exclusive events only okay so i hope this answers your query yes for a particular event obviously mutually exclusive events are pass and fail they'll have to add up to one Okay, uh, Ayush says, uh, but uh, using hit and trial only for value x equal to 1, I get y is equal to 0 apart from that for any value between 2 and 15. Uh, Ayush, you're making a mistake. You're just taking one case. Uh, see, when I draw the number line, look at my number line. Uh, the 1 is falling in the positive zone. So you have just checked one case. And you inferred everything about the remaining cases. That's wrong. I hope this part is clear. Uh, um, Ayush, I hope this part is perfectly clear that you just took x equal to 1 and x equal to 1 absolutely and x equal to 1 y is greater than 0 so look at, look at my number line my number line is saying that if you take anything that that is here it is positive so you need to check more cases and that's that is something which i won't recommend if you did this and inferred that's the wrong way of solving questions okay if there are any more questions asked guys i've added a poll uh, if you like the session kindly rate the session okay uh, also, please give feedback uh, about this session. I would, uh, I would want feedback about this session. What do you think about it? Was it helpful? Was it not helpful? Okay, Himanshu is asking when will the video be uploaded? I want to recheck. Himanshu, the video will get uploaded by Monday, okay, on YouTube, and most probably uh, we will be sharing the uh, link with you. So don't worry. So those of you who have attended the session uh, will be getting a mail about once once we actually upload it. But by Monday, definitely it will get uploaded. Truby is saying by inequality, we will get two range of x. No, by inequality, we are getting just one range of x. For less than zero, the range is this. So if you're saying two ranges, then through, uh, I would highly suggest that you go and uh, just go through the inequality video lessons once. Okay. Uh, or just look at the uh, at the webinar of algebra. I've talked about it in detail, explained it really. Uh, I, I'm not saying really well, but really elaborately, basically. I've explained really elaborately. Uh, so you will be able to help it. Uh, you'll be able to figure uh, figure out when you'll have two ranges, when you'll have single ranges. Um, 
guys we will we will be holding a few more sessions okay uh, these are just this was just uh, one uh, session on probability permutation combination we wanted to see how people respond to it uh, but we have plans of conducting more sessions so again i'm not promising the dates as such but uh, but we do plan to start a few things from the second week uh, sorry the third week of june okay so from the third week of june we'll we'll be uh, conducting a lot of sessions okay uh, they won't be per se clearing everything but we will be covering uh, uh, pain points of each and every most of the topics as i'll put it so i'll be covering uh, so somebody is asking a session on numbers somebody is saying time and distance we'll be covering it don't worry uh, we will be doing that but I, it, it should definitely happen by the third week of june okay uh dhruv uh, uh, x is less than equal to 2 and uh, x is greater than equal to 9 that is a range when you're looking for y is greater than equal to 0 okay so i hope this part is clear when y is if i if i ask you hey find me the range of x when y is greater than equal to 0 okay then in that case the range would be uh x is greater than equal to 9 and x is less than equal to 2 I hope that answers your query, Dhruv. Okay, uh, Nitish, is PNC completed? Uh, Nitish, see, understand that, uh, uh, as I told you, we are just trying to cover some of the pain points that are there in PNC. If you're looking for something which is exhaustive, right, if you want to learn all the methodologies that I talk about, if you want to learn, if you want to practice more questions, uh, they are a part of our paid, uh, paid program, right, where we, uh, where we provide everything. Uh, in two sessions, I've tried to cover as much as possible as I could, but there are other things also, Nitish. You need to look at probability related to dice, coins, cards. There are all those stuff also there. Okay. I hope that answers your query. Uh, Drew is asking if the, if the X lies between two and nine for Y, less than equal to zero. Uh, I, I did not get your question. So basically, when I say x lies between two to nine, I just explain it. I hope that answers your query. Uh, for these particular values of x, y will be less than equal to zero. Yeah, I'm considering values between two and nine, Roof. I'm considering values between two and nine. I'm considering all these values. See, two, uh, uh, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've considered all of these. For these, I'll get negative. Okay, for for two and nine, I'll get zero because I'm looking for less than equal to zero. Okay. Okay, guys, I'll end the session now. Uh, if you uh, once again, if you have any queries, uh, feel free to ask us, write to us. Okay, at this email ID, we'll be more than happy to help you. If you want to look at what we provide. Uh, if you if you liked what you have seen here, if you want to enroll for uh, uh, our courses, or if you want to just look at the free trial, just want to get a feel of it, uh, that's perfectly free, a free trial. You can go and just try it out, okay? Uh, if there are no more questions, guys, I am going to end the poll. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, guys, all the best for your preparation and uh, see you next week with uh, the next session that we have. Okay, bye. Bye.